job on the planet? How many mothers died on ice road truckers last season? <laughs> Any moms get washed overboard on deadliest catch? I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but what would you rather have as a job? You want to scoop scallops off the bottom of the ocean, catching that lobster trap to the back of your head? Or do you want to hang in the sunshine with a couple of rugrats? You'd send them to bed anytime you want in some trumped up charges because you want to have a drink and watch the prices, right? <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe it is the most difficult job. I mean, I thought roofing in the middle of July is a redhead, you know? I thought that that was a difficult job. I really did. I thought it was difficult. But evidently, evidently, these mothers, they're bending over at the waist, putting DVDs into DVD players, going to war, pinned down by a sniper. What a joke! You ever burp a baby and forget to put that towel up there? There's another shirt you gotta wash. Oh, lift with your knees and put it in that machine that does it for you. Dude, any job you can do in your pajamas is not difficult. It isn't. I'm sure it's... Yeah, to hell with these mothers. <laughs> Watching cartoons, taking naps. <laughs> Look, I'm messing around, but you know, come on. I know it's a difficult job, but the most difficult job on the whole planet. Remember when Saddam let the oil fields on fire and those poor bastards had to go put them out? 4,000 degrees, walking in with your little asbestos shield, just walking into flames. You want to do that or watch Bob the Builder again? I mean, be honest with yourself. You can basically say whatever you want on television now. You can really say anything you want on TV. And if you don't believe me, you should watch a little show called Law and Order Special Victims Unit. Because they will say the grossest, sickest shit you've ever heard in your life. No, on Special Victims Unit, they can't say the F word. They can't say the F word. But people will walk around being like, looks like the victim had anal contusions. <laughs> Yo, looks like the victim had semen and fecal matter in his ear canal. <laughs> Those are two actual things I heard on Law & Order SVU at like three in the afternoon. Both spoken by Ice-T, by the way. Ice-T is a detective with the Special Victims Unit, Mr. Cop Killer. Ice-T has been with the SVU, oh, about 11 years now, but he still treats every case like it's his first in terms of total confusion. <laughs> like, they'll be in the middle of an investigation and Ice-T will be like, you telling me this dude gets off on little girls with pigtails? <laughs> it's like, yeah, Ice, he's a pedophile. <laughs> you work in the sex crimes division. <laughs> You're gonna have to get used to that. <laughs> you know how on Law & Order they tie in current events to their episodes, like they try and weave in real news stories? So a couple years ago on SVU, they did a episode that was based on stories about sex addiction, because all these celebrities were coming out as sex addicts. So in the episode, there was a scene where the other detectives are trying to teach Ice-T what sex addiction is, and it takes a couple of minutes. <laughs> and finally, Ice-T gets it, and they cut to him in this close-up, and he goes, Oh, I get it. You mean like when someone drinks too much, or snorts cocaine, or bets the house on the ponies? I was like, yeah, you got it, man. <laughs> and I was psyched that they understood and they could go on with the investigation, but I could have watched another four hours of iced tea just naming examples. <laughs> just that shot of him like, or like when someone smokes too many cigarettes, or like when someone shops too much with credit cards. <laughs> Or like when someone plays too many scratchy lotteries. <laughs> or like when someone eats too much chocolate cake. <laughs> and he would just keep talking and it would slowly fade out and say created by Dick Wolf. <laughs> Thanks very much, my name's John Mulaney. This city is not fluffy friendly. I've been to some of the diners. What's up with that? No tables, only booths in certain restaurants? That sucks. And you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Cause we can get into the booth, but then we eat. Oh, that sucks. And then you get out and you go home and take off your shirt and you got that red line going across right here. <laughs> You're getting equator, Ecuador right there. I feel you.
That's why I love amusement parks. I love them, but I can't enjoy them because they're not fluffy friendly. You try to get on a ride and they got all the safety restraints, you know? Freaking. Right? You're fluffy like us? That's not gonna happen, right? That's why I miss the old roller coasters. One bar, three clicks, that was it, right? We never fell, we never fall. Seriously, we never fall. You know who falls? The skinny guy who sat next to us. That's who falls. That's who freaking, ah! <laughs> More room. <laughs> we never fall. And my buddy Mondo is built like me, just like me. He says, we need to get on a ride. I'm like, what are we gonna get on? He goes, they have a ride here. It's like a log ride. And you get inside the log ride and it goes up the hill, down the hill, makes a splash. I go, what about the pool bar? There's no pool bar. Seat belt? No seat belt. You just get in and go. I'm like, well, let's do it. So we get in line, and we get to the front of the line, right? And we got to deal with the lady with the headset, the one who takes her job way too serious. Okay, how many people? Four? Okay, we got four. Okay, two here, two here. How many people? Five. I got five. Okay, three there, two there. We get to the... How many... Oh, my. <laughs> I got a code 1,000. <laughs> You guys can have that one. And she gave us our own log, so we jumped in, she pulls the lever, we take off. We're splishing and splashing, right? Three minutes into the ride, the moment of truth, we get to the hill. My friend turns around and he looks at me and he says, Gabriel, let's flash the camera. I said, you're stupid. <laughs> On three. <laughs> we freaking shh. Ah! Ah! <laughs> we get off the ride, we're soaking wet. <laughs> we go to the bottom of the hill, we want to go buy that picture. We get there and there's a lady behind a counter with a bunch of monitors behind her and she's covering one of the monitors. I tell my buddy, what boat were we on? 22, she's covering screen 22. He goes, oh, we better sneak out of here. Oh yeah, we're gonna sneak out of here, freaking. <laughs> we get stopped <laughs> by security and you haven't lived until you've been stopped by a security guard with a badge in the shape of a mouse. <laughs> this guy swore, right? Hold on! Ma'am, can you move your hand? Thank you. You guys see that photo right there? You see that? That's a disgrace. We can't believe anyone could take such a photo at this park. Do you guys recognize the two large women in this picture? <laughs> and it wasn't until we got like this close to the photo that we realized something about ourselves. And that is that when two full grown fluffy men <laughs> are going downhill at a 45 degree angle with no shirts on going like this. We both look like sexy bitches. To be back. Wow. I moved to Los Angeles, so I bought a condo, a little condo. Now I have to go shopping for the condo. I'm not a good shopper. And I just started shopping randomly, and I knew the first thing I bought it was gonna be ugly. I didn't want any trouble. I went in and bought a toaster. And the lady said, could I have your name and address? No. I have this money and I'm taking this toaster now. You don't need my name and address. I'm not adopting it. I'm purchasing it. I might throw it off a building after I leave here. She asked me, she said, would you like to buy the warranty? For the toaster? No, I think I'm gonna absorb the risk on this one. I'm not a gambler, but I'm feeling lucky today. If this toaster should break, and God forbid that day should come. <laughs> I'm gonna take another $39 out of my pocket and buy another toaster, cause that's how I live on the air.
edge. I, I just don't, stupid. Now, after I got the condo all filled up, they sent me back out on the road and I toured Canada. And it's been a pleasure touring Canada. It really has been. And well, listen, the first date in Canada was Ottawa in January. That's the best time to go. Um, it's not all touristy in January. The hotel rates are favorable. My suite was $39. Or you could give them a toaster, either one. They don't care. But Ottawa's a beautiful city and they have people, the, the river freezes and people skate on the river. It's beautiful to watch. And they have these snack bars on the ice and they sell these things called beaver tails. Oh, yeah. You applauded for beaver tails. You really are my people. Um, so, So, oh, you have to skate, the people, you have to skate to the beaver tail. Now the beaver tails, it's like this big, it's a fried dough of death thing. It's all your Weight Watchers points, by the way. Um, I had to buy other people's points in my group. Now, listen, I am not an official Weight Watchers representative. I'm part of a rogue splinter organization where you can buy and sell points in the black market. So, you had to ice skate to the beaver tail, which is just cruel. Well, I, you can smell the beaver tails, you can smell the fried dough from your hotel room. It was making me crazy. So the third day I was like, give me ice skates. I skated to the beaver tail. And there was this nice family from Ottawa, a mom and dad and two kids. And they were in front of the beaver tail stand. I just remember that look in their eyes, you know, like, Oh, well, he'll stop. <laughs> I, I couldn't and I didn't. <laughs> Cost me some tickets to the show that night, I'll tell you that. And I bought them all beaver tails while the paramedics looked them over. I'm not an outdoors person either. I like the lake, I like to go swimming in the ocean, that kind of thing, but so hiking, no. Hiking is, hiking is a walk that sucks. You know what you do when you walk? I love to walk. You walk to the movies, you walk in the mall, uh, you walk in the park. Hiking, hiking, you hike down a ravine, you hike up a mountain, you were hiking and you found a dead body. My friends took me hiking. And when we got to the lake, there was a kayak. Kayaks are now on my list. I don't even, what is it? Is it a canoe for people with no friends? Mine didn't move. I'm not too big, the kayak is too small. They had to pull me out like a champagne cork. <laughs> we got him. I'm wedged in this kayak going, if I fart in this kayak, <laughs> it's gonna have a thousand meter kill radius. It's gonna go off like a Claymore mine. I, I was in Jamaica and they lost my luggage. And by the way, Air Canada, I'm flying Air Canada tomorrow. Very good airline. Lighten up at the check-in. 
Yeah. Oh, seriously. Seriously. It's, yeah, uh, excuse me, I'm going to New York. You're checking over there at the machine. I, I'm going to New York. There's a machine over there. Do you have your confirmation number? Do you have your confirmation number? What do you do? Do you just point at the machine all day? I'm gonna buy them a sign, checking that machine, and they'll lay your ass off. My, my bag was a kilo over, oh my God. Take a kilo, put it out of the bag. Put a kilo out of the bag. A kilo? What am I gonna do, cut a pair of underwear in half? If a kilo makes a difference in this bag going on that plane, I'm not going on that plane. I was in Jamaica and the airlines lost my luggage. I won't say what airline, but they lost my luggage. And there's not a lot of big and talls in Jamaica. I bought an extra large shirt and I had jeans on. I cut the jeans too short. Alcohol was involved in this decision. Oh, I look like a hooker. And the world's least successful hooker, I'm not bragging. There was a ride in Jamaica called a banana boat. It was an inflatable banana. And there were three of them going out at once. And it was actually fun, and I was dressed like a hooker. So I wanted something to take my mind off things. So I got on this inflatable banana. And, and the motorboat pulls it, and it was a lot of fun. Till the motorboat took the hard left. And I went sailing off the banana boat into the other banana boat. And there's that poor family from Ottawa. And they're like, there's not even a beaver tail stand here. Why are you following us? When I was in Los Angeles, I went to the doctor. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm getting older and I wanted to make sure that I was okay for the road. The doctor did a blood test, a stress test, and blood pressure, and they were really good. Now the doctor looked at me, shocked. She goes, these numbers are good. She goes, did you know you're allergic to wheat? I did not know that. The next time one of my friends call me and say, John, we're going wheat picking, would you like to come? I'll have to say no. The doctor said I was allergic. <laughs> then I thought, wait a minute, maybe I should ask questions. Wheat is flour. Oh, I said, what does this wheat thing mean? She said, do you eat a lot of gluten? <laughs> I, I don't know what gluten is, but yes, I would say yes. <laughs> um, I think I'm mostly gluten, to be honest with you. I don't know. And she gave me a book of things that have gluten in it. You know what has gluten in it? Everything! <laughs> I said, check again, maybe it's just cancer. <laughs> I, I didn't take it well. Have you tried gluten-free stuff? It needs gluten. If, if you want to know where the gluten section is in your local supermarket, look for someone with a gun in their mouth. Because bullets are gluten-free. <laughs> then I tried some gluten-free bread. <laughs> I immediately asked for gluten spread so that I might reintroduce the gluten. I hope they make, I can't believe it's not gluten. The, the gluten-free bread doesn't toast. It broke the toaster. 30 
$99. I should have bought the warranty. I love you, Montreal. Thank you. Bonsoir, mes amis. Merci. My kids press my buttons. Kids make you angry. Kids can make you angry. I don't know why. My son, I'm going to tell you what my son does to make me laugh. When my son get mad, he throw a temper. This is my son throwing a temper. Uh, 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 uh. It's the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know what it means, but it scares me. <laughs> I don't, all right, all right. It's scary. I got scared one day. I thumped him. Mm, stop. He's, uh, 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 I threw his equilibrium off. He didn't know what to do. My daughter's a different ball game, though. I don't know why, I mean, but my daughter got me wrapped around her finger. She's spoiled. I spoil her on purpose. I'm supposed to. I'm dad. Crazy thing, though, she knows she got me wrapped around her finger. Like, she know how to play me and her mom against each other. It's amazing to me. Like, the other day, she came into the room. She hit me with the soft voice. She was like, Dad, can I have a cookie? I was like, yeah, baby, come on. Let's go get a cookie. I grabbed my daughter's hand. I started walking towards the kitchen to get a cookie. Out of nowhere, all I heard was this. Don't give her no cookie. It scared me. I, I didn't know what to do. I just stopped. I stayed still. Because I didn't know who said it. I was like, Jesus, why would you say that? She, she can have a cookie. I'm going to tell you how smart my daughter is. My daughter's so smart. She didn't fall out. She didn't have a tantrum. My daughter looked at me. She was like, Dad, I thought you was the man of the house. <laughs> when she said that, I didn't know what to do, so I got mad. I snapped. I was like, what you mean she can't have no damn cookie? Well, why would you buy the cookies if can't nobody have a cookie? I'm shutting the whole cookie operation down. That's what I did. You know how I shut it down? I got the cookies, got a ladder, put the cookies on top of the refrigerator, then I hid the ladder. The reason why I need the ladder, because we small in my house. You need a ladder to get to everything. Don't judge me, sir, just because your arms are longer than mine. I'm a human. You know what else makes me laugh about my daughter? Man, my daughter, she got friends now. She at the age where she got other friends. Four or five-year-old girls running around the house. I babysit them, I watch them by myself, I don't mind. It's a lot of pressure, though, watching other people's kids. A lot of pressure. Nothing worse than giving somebody back their baby messed up. You ever get somebody back their baby in a condition that they didn't give you, your, <laughs> that they didn't give you the baby in? I'm talking about to the point where you gotta explain something to them before they see their baby. Hey, wait, real, real quick, before you see your baby. Um, your baby had two eyes, right? Okay, all right. Long story short, gas went off in the kitchen, blew your baby face off. No, everybody else ran except your baby. Y'all don't run in your house? No? That's my thing. I panic too much when it comes to dealing with my kids. And I'm not going to lie, I make mistakes. I'm not the best parent in the world. I forgot to feed my kids one time. <laughs> I'm being honest. I don't like to lie. I'm going to tell you why. PlayStation 3 just came out, right? <laughs> I'm watching my kids, but I'm playing the game. They crying all day. So in my mind, I'm like, they got attitudes. They spoil. <laughs> okay? They spoil. They got attitudes. I'm not going to deal with this stuff all day. So my lady came home, she was like, why are they crying? I was like, because they spoiled and they got attitudes. That's why they're crying. And she was like, well, did they eat? I was like, damn it. I ate, but they didn't say nothing when I ate. They just, <laughs> you know, my son was just looking at me. Ah, 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 ah. Y'all been great, man. I'm Kevin Hart. Y'all take it easy. You ever drive down the street and see like 30 people up on the sidewalk and you just think, <laughs> right? You don't do it. You just think it. That's what separates the psychos from the functioning psychos. <laughs> yeah, psychos, they just do it. Hey, all right, that's a good idea. <laughs> they get the wipers going, they make a day out of it, right? But a rational person, you, you like think it through. You start going, you man, if I just leave my hand right here, nobody knows who I am. I move it two degrees over here. I'm on the cover of Newsweek. I'm instantly famous. Right here, no one knows me. Like, hey, Bill, you want to go to the cookout? Maybe you could bring that potato salad you brought last year. It was such a big hit. One of the most horrific scenes we've seen in years. Bodies just strewn about. You know, Amy's gonna be there. She's still asking for you. You should ask her out. No indication he even tried to stop. Seriously, you're getting older. Put your hands on the dashboard. Put them on the dashboard. You have those? All right. No, I have that stuff all the time. I do. My girl took me to a street fair recently, right? You guys have street fairs out here? You know, they close off the block, there's like shawarma, there's like stuff made out of buttons, right? 
People with no teeth are making keychains, right? It's a typical girlfriend idea. It sucks, and it's gonna take all Saturday, right? She's all excited. She's like swinging my arm. Oh my God, this is gonna be great. I'm like praying for lightning. Maybe some like scaffolding to fall down on me, you know? No, we show up, right? The first thing she sees is this big table and nothing but homemade jewelry, right? Homemade jewelry. It's got twigs, macaroni in it. It's just, it's a table of crap. It's crap. The whole thing is crap. But she loves it. She's like, oh my God, look at these earrings. Do you like these? Do you think these are nice? I just want to be like, no. If they were nice, they'd, they'd be in a store, all right? <laughs> There'd be a roof, some sort of structure would be built around this. This is crap. This is just a table of crap. The guy's even wearing shoes. That's a good indication that this is crap. But I don't want to ruin a day, so I'm like, yeah, go ahead, check it out. I'm gonna go get some air. Even though we're outside, I think there's more air to be had, right? <laughs> so I walk like three, four tables away and I come up to this lady. She got this big table of nothing but muffins. Muffins, right? It's like 85 degrees out. She's selling muffins and she's got this big stupid, hey, look at the muffins I made, look in her face. And the second I saw that, that part of my brain was just like, dude, what would happen if you just walked up and just said, hey lady, uh, are these your muffins? Oh yeah, and I just started going, blam, 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 blam. Like how many of these muffins could I mush before anybody did anything. <laughs> I mean, realistically, I think I could have got the whole table. Because even if you saw me doing that, it would take at least five to six seconds to process. Like, did they say he could do that? Is, is it like a game? Do you eat the muffin off your fist? That just seems like a waste of pastry. You know, there's no security at a street fair. There's no bouncer staying there. He's mushing the muffins. Okay, I'm on it. Sir, we're gonna have to ask you to leave. And they just choked me out. So I just started thinking of the horrified look on this lady's face as I started slamming these muffins. And out of nowhere, I just started laughing like a maniac. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm like slumped over this fried dough cart. I'm dying. My girl looks at me. She's like, what the hell are you laughing at? And like an idiot, I actually tried to explain <laughs> this screwed up thought to her. I swear to God, I'm just sitting there like, I was just thinking, what if I started punching the muffins? You know what I mean? I just started punching them. She's just looking at me like, why do I go out with you? <laughs> Dude, but I swear to God, if I never broke eye contact the second I started hitting those muffins, that lady, she wouldn't even been able to call for help. I would have been in her head. She'd be like, did I go to high school with this guy? Why would you do that? Muffins are a happy food. I, I don't understand this. Hello! Let's keep this mother effing giggle coaster going, huh? Woo! Are you, are you memorized, mesmerized by my sparkles? Good. Because I, I killed a genie to get this jacket. It was only after I had cut the jacket off the genie's dead body that I realized I could simply wish for it. <sighs> Should have wished for hindsight. Ah, what a conundrum. I feel guilty. You're welcome. <laughs> Don't come find me when that genie ghost haunts you. All right, um, I got so much to cover tonight. I want to do uh, two things. The first thing is I want to try to find Amelia Earhart. Uh, every day that goes by, I just fear the worst for her. <laughs> so maybe if we could put our heads together, Canada, we could figure it out because I could tell you right now that President Obama does not give a shit. <laughs> the second thing that I'm going to do is two monologues, one regular and one vaginal. <laughs> uh, it's going to get intense. 
Do I have a 95 minute knock knock joke? You bet your ass I do. It's gonna start real curious. You're not gonna know who's there. Right? And then after a journey, if they cut it out of this broadcast, all the people at home know that they're missing out. Um, I've been uh, watching a lot of internet lately. I'm a bit uh, addicted. I can't lie. I'm on the internet every day. <laughs> I, I, when I was young, I would, if I wanted to, you know, explore um, my sensuality, all I had access to was a poster of Robert Smith above my bed. I mean, that was it. But these days, you can click onto you porn and you just get the whole buffet. <laughs> And I don't know what's going to happen to this generation, but I am afraid that the girls are going to grow up attracted to men without faces. <laughs> and that's going to ruin the population. Um, I know I was going to do two monologues, but I'm only, I'm only allowed time for one now because we had so much fun, didn't we? <laughs> My God. Um, has how many people here um, have seen the vagina monologues? Woo! Woo! Well, you were probably in it. I can tell because you're like, yes! Any, vagina monologues! Anyone else? Any? Yeah? Okay, great. Um, I have two. And when I watched it, I was inspired and I thought to myself, you know what? There are so many other body parts that we're ashamed of that I should write monologues about. And I penned a set of monologues about one area of the body called the taint. It's called the taint monologues. Now, just so you know, taint is the scientific word for the area between your genitals and your anus. Because it ain't your anus, and it ain't your balls, and it ain't your vagina. It's your taint. Okay, that's the scientific word. And that is why I have pinned the taintalogs. So I am going to read one taintalog for you tonight. Um, I know it's educational. This might be a bit of a navel gazer. You know, you're gonna be reflecting on this. And I and I'm so glad. Okay. This is published, okay? This is in a book. It's in a book. So it's important. <laughs> My taint is tiny. It's special. It's mine. You can steal my heart, but you are not taking my taint. You can rip apart my dignity, but my taint will remain intact. You can do me in the anus, but just you try to penetrate my taint. I hold on to my taint fiercely because you can't have it. I'll never forget the first time I saw my taint. I was 13. I was in my bedroom with my mother's hand mirror. I was on my back, legs spread, gazing at my treasure, nestled like an island between two black holes. It was a constant between unknowns. I touched my pinky finger to my taint and pretended it was a castaway on Taint Island. <laughs> my pinky traced its small island quarters and quickly developed rock fever. Pinky jumped frantically for help and caught Ring Finger's attention. He was on his way. <laughs> Together they made a home on Taint Island, exploring the parameters back and forth endlessly. But before they could get off the island, my mother walked in on me. <laughs> she was livid, horrified, annoyed, and most of all, jealous. <laughs> she grabbed the mirror away from me and screamed, I don't ever want to see you playing with your tank again! And I didn't. 
for 42 years. Four taint-free decades passed me by. My taint was nothing but a ghost down there, floating silently between my anus and vagina, haunting my prepubescent memories. After my mother died, I had to clean out her house. The first thing I found was that hand mirror. I missed my mom, but now I missed my taint even more. I closed the door to her bedroom and arranged myself on her bed. I was scared of what I might see. Would my taint still look the same? Or would it look as old as my face? I took a deep breath and positioned the mirror between my legs. There it was. It looked exactly the same. A piece of skin stretched between my anus and vagina. I touched my pinky to it. We were reunited. I started laughing and crying and shouting. I hope you're watching, Mother. I'm playing with my taint. And you can't do anything about it because you're dead. My taint was the opposite of dead. It was resurrected. My taint is tiny. My taint is special. But most of all, my taint is my taint. Knock, knock. That's <laughs> kidding. That's all right. I don't like ostriches. For those people that don't know what an ostrich is, it's a bird that's the same size as me. I'm in Nebraska, right? I had a run-in with this ostrich. I'm in Nebraska, I'm on the side of the road, I'm peeing. I get done peeing, I look to my left, it was an ostrich looking at me while I was peeing. He was standing on one leg like this, his body was facing this way, but his head, his head was like this. Now I didn't know what it was, so I didn't say nothing. My friend got out of the car, he's like, yo, what the hell is that? I was like, I don't know, it's like a big pigeon or something. I didn't know what it was, right? He was like, there ain't no pigeon. He took an ink pen, threw the pen at it. When he threw the pen at the ostrich, he hit the ostrich in the chest. As Soon as he hit the ostrich in the chest, his other leg came down. His body was still facing this way, but his head was still like this. <laughs> I was like, you know what? We should probably go get in the car because we don't really know what that means. You know, like that, that could be a sign. That could mean like you got 10 seconds to get out of my face before I kill you. <laughs> I'm gonna eat your kids. We don't know what he's trying to say. So let's just get in the car where we say fast. So we get in the car, I start laughing. I'm like, ah, <laughs> you were scared, man. He's like, no, you were scared. I'm like, no, you were scared. No, you, no, you was. I'm driving like 30 miles per hour. I look out the passenger window. The ostrich was running 30 miles per hour beside the car. His body was still facing this way, but his head was like this. And he was haul assing at 30 miles per hour. Now, when I'm scared, like if I'm real, real scared, sir, I'll start to cry. Only if I'm real scared. So I was like, why would you throw a pin at it if we don't even know what it is? <laughs> we don't even know what it is! I was freaking out, right? He was like, man, stop being a little girl. Just speed up, drive faster. I started driving 60 miles per hour. When I tell you that this ostrich was running 60 miles per hour, I am not playing. His body was still facing this way, but his head was like this. And his legs, you couldn't even see him. They, it, it looked like a black cotton ball floating. It was amazing. And I was scared because he never took his eyes off us. Like he was looking at us the whole time. Like he didn't check for a wall, another bird, nothing. It's like he was like, when I catch y'all, I'm gonna kill both of y'all over a pen. And I was like, why don't you just apologize? Because I was scared. I'm scared of dolphins as well. I'm very scared of dolphins. And I, like I said, I got a reason to be scared of everything that I'm afraid of, right? Me and my lady, we in Maui one time. We in Maui, she's like, babe, we should go swim with the dolphins. I'm like, no, I told you how I feel about them dolphins. I don't want to swim with the dolphins. She's like, come on, stop acting like that. Let's swim with the dolphins. I was like, you know what? Let's swim with the dolphins. Something happened to me, it's gonna be on your conscience. Now we go to swim with the dolphins. They got the dolphins in like this little tank, right? It's like eight dolphins. I see an old lady on the back of a dolphin, these little boys. I'm like, you know what, babe? I might've been overreacting. Get the camera, take some pictures of me on back of the dolphin. I was excited, right? I get in the water, I'm on the back of the dolphin. The instructor, he says, as soon as you grab the dolphin fin, the dolphin gonna start taking you around. So whenever you ready, grab his fin. As Soon as I grabbed my dolphin fin, my dolphin went straight to the bottom of the tank. He went straight down, right? 
Now, because I was scared, I didn't let go. I held on. And you know when you're scared, you start to mentally create stuff in your own mind. I was like, it's obvious that I got a racist dolphin. He don't like black people. That's obvious. He done cut a deal with a shark to bring him a black piece of meat. Something bad about to happen, right? I let go, I get to the top, I start snapping on the instructor. I was like, nobody just saw dolphin number eight missing, huh? Nobody noticed that I was gone for like 30 seconds? Y'all don't have a bell or nothing at your ring? He tried to kill me. He took me to the bottom of the tank to meet with sharks, okay? I'm the only black dot in this damn tank. You didn't notice that I wasn't going around, huh? You see this old lady and this little boy, but nobody noticed the black swirl missing? Nobody noticed it? And he was like, whoa, whoa, calm down. It's three feet, just stand up. And I was like, what? <laughs> What'd he say? I didn't even realize that I was walking and talking at the same time. <laughs> But it was a racist dolphin. I'm gonna tell you how I know it was a racist dolphin. Cause like, you know how dolphins be like, kick, 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 kick. Well, when I got out the water, I looked at him and he looked at me, he's like, nigga, nigga. And I said, what did you just, what? My name's Kevin Hart, y'all been a great crowd. See you. All right. All right, relax. Hi. How are you? Okay. So, um, does anybody still play the uh, how much money would you suck a dick for game with your friends? <laughs> Just a game I reopened in my life. I Nobody, okay. You? Okay. Well, if you don't know what the game is, it's basically one of your friends is like, hey, man. Would you suck a dick for a million dollars? And then we would all lie and be like, no. Here's the thing. Of course I would do it for a million dollars. In a heartbeat. Before I even blinked, I would say yes to a million dollars. To be honest, I would do it for like 5,000, if I had to be honest with myself. Here's the thing about that game. My opinion has changed, all right? When I played that game in high school three years ago, I, I always said no, and I meant it, you know? When my friend in high school would be like, hey man, would you suck a dick for a million dollars? I'm like, no. And I really meant that, you know, because I lived with my mom at the time. <laughs> you know, I had food, I had clothes, I had a TV in my room. I didn't need to suck a dick. <laughs> now? Now I live on my own. Two dicks a year. I think two dicks a year is an acceptable amount of dicks to suck. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. You know, one dick in the summer, so you have a great summer. And then one dick before Christmas, so the whole family eats. I don't think there's anything, think there's anything wrong with that. And people are like, oh, you're gay. And I'm like, no, I'm a businessman, okay? I'm fucking making moves out here. Oh, man, I, don't, I, have, a, I have a girlfriend now. It's weird. When you have, when you have a girlfriend, you, you basically just go home. That's it. You just, just go home and answer questions. That's what true love is. You know, no, she's great. It's just, you know, I'm not good at sex because I'm 20. So like, I'm not, you know, I wasn't raised in a brothel. Like I'm not, I'm not good yet. I don't, I don't get why girls get mad at that. You know, when every time I have sex with a girl, she's just like, is that it? I'm like, yes. Yes, it is. I'm not 40, okay? I'm in training right now. You know any good guitar players that have been playing guitar for a year? Yeah. Yeah, I don't... I don't know any of them. They're all still paying for lessons, and that's where I'm at right now. 20-year-olds have sex like Green Day, okay? 
It's just the same shit every time for a minute and 52 seconds. Yeah, just a bunch of din it din it din it din it come. That's it. That's the entire... But Green Day has some good songs, so fuck off, all right? Leave me alone. I have a lot of black friends. Uh, I'm white, by the way. I know I look miscellaneous in the face. <laughs> but that's another set. Uh, yeah. I don't know how I'm white either, to be completely honest with you. Because I can see my lips from here. So... You know? But no, it's... I uh, got into a fight with my black friends recently. And uh, they were like, yo, son. I was like, yes, dad. Uh, yeah, by the way, do that. That's a lot of fun. Whenever a black dude comes up to you, just fuck with him. Whenever he's like, yo, son, be like, yes, papa! How are you, father? Uh, or creep him out. I like to creep him out sometimes, too. When they're like, yo, son, be like, dad? <laughs> I always knew you'd come back. No, we got into uh, an argument. Uh, here's the thing. I'm the only white guy out of my group of friends. So, like, you could, you could watch 12 Years as a Slave with your black friends if you're a white guy. You can, you know? I wouldn't, but... But you can. But when it's over, don't, don't do this, okay? Because this is what I did. And uh, this is why uh, we got into a fight. All right, here's what happened. When, when you watch 12 Years as a Slave with your black friends, here's, here's what not to do. What I did was I looked at all my black friends and I was like, hey guys, great <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, that's my time on Pete Davis, so thank you. You guys, I'm gonna be honest with you. I am so hungover. You do not mess around. You do not mess around here in French Canada. So I was thinking about it and I've been a comedian for about 10 years and in my 20s I talked a lot about drinking because that's what you do. You have a crap job and you drink and you eat garbage at your desk. And then in my 30s I started to become more of an adult and once in a while things get out of hand when you're drunk. But what scares me about drinking as I get older is this. In my group of friends, I am the alpha, obviously. Look what I do for a living. But in general, <laughs> I am the one, I call the Uber, I print the Groupon. I'm the one galvanizing everyone. So what worries me, if I do something dumb when I'm drunk, what hope do the sheep who I lead have? <laughs> we were out the other night and we were hammered. And by the other night, I mean last night. We were hammered. Like the kind of drunk where you can't even read. Okay, and then you realize it's because you're in Chinatown. Actually, you know you're messed up when you're in Chinatown and you can read. Oh, ancient secrets, not so hidden. So we're walking through there and we walk into a bar. I'm reticent to say that it was a club because I'm 33, but there was a dance floor and a DJ and I had on like a little bit of body glitter. I got Right about now, you're probably wondering, Eliza, why are you wearing body glitter? I will tell you just for laughs, because my date was late to pick me up. Gentlemen, you must know something. Every single woman in this room has a list of things that she does to get ready. No matter how much makeup she wears or how little, we have a checklist, whether it's brushing your teeth, filing down a horn, polishing a hoof, putting on blush. We all have a thing that we do. Every woman has a list of things she does to get ready. And when she's done with that list, there is a, an apex, nay, a pinnacle of attractiveness that every woman is capable of reaching. There's a point where we're not getting any hotter. And every minute that you're late to pick us up is one more minute we spend messing with our makeup and we start to get uglier, okay? Yeah, one time my date was an hour late, I grew a tail, like it gets worse. This guy walked in, it was only 30 minutes, thank God, I'm on the ground, there's caboodle shrapnel everywhere. I've got half a wet and wild lip gloss. I'm like, stay back, I'm a pretty girl. Like it gets worse. <laughs> because what happens is we have all this time, so we start messing with more. The more time you have to get ready, the worse it can be. The best advice I can give as a woman, not the best, but for the purpose of this set, the best piece of advice I can give, if you're putting on your makeup, give yourself one hour. 
one hour for the makeup. Hair is like another story. Give yourself one hour for the makeup, set a timer, girls, and when that timer goes off, chefs, put your knives down, step away from your plates. You be done. You be done, okay? So we think we can add things. That's what happened with that body glitter. I found that body glitter, which in hindsight, wasn't even body glitter. It was straight up craft glitter. <laughs> and as an adult, I was like, the things that go on my face, right? And I convinced myself I could make it look good. I convinced myself I could do a classy amount of body glitter. <laughs> but do you ever think that? Do you ever think to yourself that because you're not trashy, you can pull off doing something that's trashy? You're like, I can wear fingerless gloves. I went to McGill. Like, it's okay for some reason. <laughs> That's how I felt about that body glitter. Balcony, I found it. I was like, I'll just do a little bit. I'll just do a little bit. I'll just do a winter frost. Not a term, not a makeup term. Am I Elsa? Is it frozen? What's a winter frost? Just let it go. Just do a little bit more. Maybe I'll just highlight my orbital rim. Yes. That way when we're dancing, the light will hit it and it'll be like, bing, anime. Ah! Just keep going. Five more minutes later, maybe I'll just highlight my jawbone so he knows I come from good chewing stock. Just keep going. Five more minutes later, sparkle fish. So now I look like a goddamn road flare and we're in public. So we walk into this bar and one of the difficult parts about being a woman, besides everything, is that we're constantly battling time. In the long run, we're worried about weight gain, wrinkles, society rejecting us as a whole. But minute to minute, we are messing with and fixing everything. We are fixing our clothes and our hair and our makeup and our thongs and our bras and our mustaches. Braid it, beat it, set it. Because if one thing is off, then the night is ruined, Scott. Like it has to be perfect. One time I left my house without mascara on, I did a U-turn on a four lane highway. Like, no! <laughs> they will see the whites of my eyes. <laughs> and gentlemen, I certainly don't wanna leave you out. If you think it's exhausting to hear about that madness, try living in this head, man, okay? We are tired all the time. Fun scientific fact about women that I made up on the way here, women get four minutes out of every 24 hour cycle where our brain tells us to stop messing with everything. We get four minutes of rest, four minutes where we stop messing with our hair, I saw you, messing with our jackets and everything, four minutes of a mental ceasefire. We get four minutes a night where our brain finally sends a message like homeostasis achieved. You're like, oh. The U.S. film industry is saying that online piracy is costing the U.S. film industry $20 billion a year. Can you believe that? Online piracy is costing the U.S. film industry $20 billion a year. Like, don't they know they can download that shit for free? <laughs> like, who are you paying? You're being ripped off. Okay, use BitTorrent. For the love of God, does anyone here use BitTorrent? I only got a couple of guys. One of the hardest things to do in life is explain to your mother where to find a legitimate download off the internet. How do you explain to your mom what links to click on? You just know, right? It's the intangibles. You know, it just comes through years and years of internet corporate law abuse. You just know, you look at how the link is phrased, right? You look at the context of the page, you look at the banner ads, how dirty they are, right? Look at the comments, nine out of nine, you know what's legit. It's like Malcolm Gladwell blink, right? You just know what's legit, what's not legit. How do you pass that information to your mom? How do you transfer the expertise to your mom? Your mom doesn't know, right? Because anytime your mom clicks on anything, anything your mom clicks on, it's a virus, right? <laughs> as soon as your mom touches that mouse, it's just a virus that compromises the entire system. Your mom could find a virus on the Google homepage, right? <laughs> How? How are you under attack by spyware on the Google homepage? 95% of it is blank. I feel like the internet is becoming an angry place, right? Just full of trolls and haters. No matter what you do online, just a bunch of people want to tell you how much you suck, how much you're wrong. You state half an opinion, or I think you suck and you're wrong. I feel like us as a generation of internet users, like we're used to that by now, right? We're used to the hatred online. We can witness pure hatred. 
directed at us on a one-on-one -on -one basis and we, we can deal with it better. Okay, not all the time, we're still human, we still get angry, but we deal with it better because we know that's just a troll. Okay, it means nothing, right? Just brush it off, dirt off your shoulder like Jay-Z, right? <laughs> but the previous generations never had to deal with online trolling, right? On that kind of global, personal, day-to-day -day basis. Okay, sure, they had their own challenges, right? Like Hitler. <laughs> And the depression and the bubonic plague, but online trolling, okay? They never had to deal with online trolling on that scale. My mom, she lives in Singapore right now, okay? And she really loves the Singapore government, okay? For whatever reason, probably because of propaganda, all right? All right, so there was like a YouTube video about the Singapore government. And I can't even remember whether the video was positive or negative or propaganda. It doesn't even matter, okay? Because the comments were negative. That's my point. No matter what you do online, people just say nasty things about it. So for some reason, my mom scrolls through these comments. She reads all these derogatory comments about the Singapore government. She gets angry, right? So now she needs to do something about it. So like a vigilante, she registers a YouTube account just to respond to every hateful <laughs> comment on this video. Okay, but worse still, she registers her YouTube account using her real name, all right? And she's typing her response, like a three-page dissent, right? Like, how dare you say this about the Singapore government? You don't know what you're talking about. You're spoiled, you're ignorant, blah, 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 post. Five minutes after posting, regrets posting it because she used her real name, calls me up from Singapore all the way to Australia, where I live right now, on the phone, asking me, Ronnie, Ronnie, how do you delete a comment off YouTube? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Explain to your mom over the phone how to fix a computer problem when you can't see her screen. <laughs> it's quite possibly the most excruciating form of torture even possible. If I was an intelligence officer and you captured me and you wanted to extract information from me, you don't need Jack Bauer, okay? You don't need Guantanamo Bay. You need to fuck some shit up on my mom's computer. You got to call me on the phone. Ronnie, how do you think I will break like a twig? I will tell you everything you need to know. For the love of God, fix a computer, fix it right now. But because she's 5,000 miles away, you have to explain every excruciating step to her like you're defusing a bomb. Right? Okay, mom, okay, look, mom, you want to delete a comment off YouTube? Okay, it's easy, okay? Just relax, just calm down, just listen to what I'm saying. Click the red X next to your comment, okay? Do you see a comment? Yeah, just click the red X. No, no, click it. No, click. No, click is left button. Click means left button. No, the mouse, the thing, the wire in front of you, the mouse. Yeah, it's got two buttons, press the left button. Yeah, just press the left button. No, you have to move your pointer to the red X first. No, the point, the, the white arrow, move the white arrow, move the white, oh no, you're right, mom, whoever designed this system is stupid, you're right, oh, the system is stupid, computers are stupid, YouTube is stupid, everything's stupid, mom, everything in the universe is stupid, except for you, okay, let's just get through this, just move the white arrow to the red X and press the left button, do you see the white, you don't see the white arrow, okay, okay, move the mouse, no, you move the mouse so you can locate the white arrow moving as you move the mouse. I promise the white arrow's there, mom. Just move the mouse. It might be off screen for a second. Just shake the mouse. No, shake the mouse so you can make the white arrow move as you move the mouse. Because moms are like T-Rex. If it's not moving, they can't see it. Okay? Can't see it. Okay, move the mouse. You see the white arrow moving as you move the mouse. You don't see the white arrow moving. You don't see it moving. You see nothing moving. You see nothing. Now you see nothing. You see a blank screen. Okay, fuck it, I'm flying over right now. No, don't book my flight, I'll book it myself. You'll mess it up. And then you get there and it's like she wasn't even in front of her computer, right? I was just in St. Louis uh, visiting my grandma. Whenever I go see her, she's always like, you know, come hungry, because she likes to see me thin. Uh, I don't even call, I don't call my grandma grandma, I call her Mimi, because when I was little, I couldn't pronounce old bitch. So that's what I came up with, and it's fun. It's a joke, she's so sweet, she wouldn't even hurt a fly, because flies don't understand verbal abuse. But, uh, it's okay. I'm 28, which uh, I just found out is the age where, as a woman, your body starts to tell you to have a baby. It's, uh, my hormones are like, have a baby. My bank account is like, don't you even fucking think about it. Don't you do it. 
I did have a pregnancy scare recently, which, um, and I say scare because I was like, who's the dad? Uh, I was like, are we gonna have to bring Maury into this? Because <laughs> I fucked Maury Povich a couple months ago, but um, to call him up. I had a pregnancy scare. The first person I told was my mom, which I'll never do again because she got excited. Yeah, she was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be a grandmother. And I was like, yeah, until Tuesday. <laughs> Hold your horses, Nana. Soak it up. <laughs> That's what I told the doctor too. So that was, um, <laughs> don't groan. I just got back from the Midwest where you can't talk about that stuff at all. And uh, I, they have anti-abortion billboards everywhere there. I was driving across Kansas. There was one that confused me. It, it was just a big one that said, thinking about abortion. I'm like, y yeah, I'm on a long road trip. <laughs> like, what else am I gonna do? Can't text and drive anymore, of course. So, <laughs> thinking about abortion. But then three, like 300 yards later, it was like another one that said, uh, consider adoption. I'm like, why would I want some stranger's baby if I'm gonna get rid of my own? Like, I don't get that at all. <laughs> Right? I don't get that. It's <laughs> I'm in a long distance relationship right now, which means I'm single, so that's, yeah. When the cat's away, the mouse pretends her phone died. Every night. I can't do long distance anymore, because it's all you, have, all you have is phone sex. And to be good at phone sex, you have to be good at, at regular sex. I recently found out I'm not, cause uh, I'm on the phone, he's like, talk dirty, and I'm like, I'm just laying here. <laughs> Later, and I hung up, and that's all I've got. That's all I know. That's all I've ever done. And I love it, I just lay back and get it. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> Girls, do you know you can lay there? Guys will still fuck you, I've tried it out for us. <laughs> They're like happier there most of the time. It's awesome, being on bottom is the tops. It's pretty sweet down there. Once in a while, they'll like straight up ask you to participate and it's, it's a bummer, I'm not gonna lie, it sucks. <laughs> but like, he bought you dinner at Chili's, you owe him, like that's how I was raised. I don't know about you, but I felt obligated. It did happen to me recently. Um, this guy was giving me like a, like a really good rogering and at some point in the middle of, yeah. I like that phrasing. Cause girls can't be like, I got fucked. Like we gotta say stuff like, I got good rogering. <laughs> Sounds classy, doesn't it? Sounds like he courted me or like I knew his name or something. Like it sounds <laughs> fancy. I like it. So he was, get, he was giving me a good rogering and I thought we were having fun, but at some point in the middle of it, I remember he was like, he was like, hey, will you get on top? And, and I was like, what'd you say? He woke me up and I was like, what's going on? <laughs> I like rolled over, I'm like, I don't wanna go to school. <laughs> but I did it, you know, I got up there, I took off my sleep mask and, uh, <laughs> wipe the drool off my face. I hope it was drool and um, <laughs> I was really out of it. And uh, I got up there and I gotta give it up to you guys for being up there most of the time. I had no idea how much cardio that was <laughs> right out of the gate. I thought I was in shape, no. It was the worst spinning class of my entire life. <laughs> it was awful. I was wheezing right away. Just winded. I don't know if it was like the change in elevation or something. <laughs> I was like, this is like fucking in Denver. It sucked. I'm lazy. <laughs> I'm bad at sex. I think that's what I've concluded. It's fine. I'm okay with it because I got a late start. I'm learning. I didn't have sex till I was 21 because uh, I was saving myself for Jesus, which I know luckily that was my gardener's name, so that worked out, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I found a loophole in my dad's rule. Uh, yeah, thank you. I don't know why. I really just waited because I was scared, you know? And, uh, and I, I think I only did it ultimately for the first time because that guy was the first guy to have a really good argument for why we should, you know? And I remember because I was like, I don't think I'm ready. And he was like, come on. Yeah, that was it. Uh, 
Solid logic. I think he's a lawyer now. Thank you guys very much. I'm Nikki Glaser.